In my 2012 review, I explored the role healthy diet may play in preventing, treating, and reversing our deadliest diseases. In 2013, I covered our most common conditions. This year, I'd like to address some of our leading causes of disability. There's only one diet that's ever been proven to reverse heart disease in the majority of patients, a plant-based diet. Anytime anyone tries to sell you on some new diet, ask them one, do me a favor, one simple question. Does your, has your diet been proven to reverse heart disease? You know, the number one most likely reason you and everyone you love will die. You know, does it reverse heart disease? If it doesn't, why would you even consider it? And if that's all a plant-based diet could do, reverse our number one killer, well then shouldn't that be the default diet until proven otherwise? And the fact that it can also be effective in preventing, treating, reversing other leading killers like diabetes and high blood pressure would seem to make the case for plant-based eating overwhelming. So why don't more doctors prescribe it? Available time is a reason frequently cited by physicians, but if you probe a little deeper, yes, they complain about not having enough time to give their patients dietary advice, but the number one reason was their perception that patients fear of being deprived of all the junk that they're eating. Right? Can you imagine a doctor saying, yeah, I'd like to tell my patients to stop smoking, but I know how much they love it. Dr. Neil Barnard wrote a compelling editorial in the American Medical Association's Journal of Ethics. When he stopped smoking in the 80s, the lung cancer death rate was peaking in the U.S. but has since dropped with dropping smoking rates. No longer were doctors telling patients to give their throat a vacation by smoking a fresh cigarette. Doctors realized that they were more effective at counseling patients to quit smoking if they no longer had tobacco stains on their own fingers. In other words, doctors went from bystanders or even enablers to leading the fight against smoking. And today, he says, plant-based diets are the nutritional equivalent of quitting smoking. This is not vegetarianism. Vegetarians often consume a, all sorts of junk, vegans too for that matter, right? This new paradigm is exclusively plant-based nutrition, whole plant foods. Why exclusively? Well, as reported in the Cornell Oxford China study, there does not appear to be a threshold beyond which further benefits did not accrue with increasing proportions of plant foods in the diet. It appears the more plant-based foods and less animal-based foods, the better. It took five decades after the initial studies linking tobacco and cancer for effective public health policies to be put into place with enormous cost to human health. Must we wait another 50 years to respond to the epidemics of dietary diseases. They do have money on their sides. The chemical, tobacco, and food industries have the luxury to share similar tactics with the drug companies because they have the resources to do so. In contrast, powerful and cheap health-promoting activities like eating healthy are too cheap, can't be patented, aren't profitable, and they throw that money around. The American Dietetic Association, for example, promotes a series of nutrition fact sheets. Who writes them? Industry sources pay $20,000 per fact sheet to the ADA and explicitly take part in writing the documents. So you can learn about eggs from the egg industry, the benefits of chewing gum from the Wrigley Science Institute, I didn't know Wrigley's had a science institute. <laughs> In 2008, the ADA announced that the Coca-Cola company had become an official partner to give them prominent access to key influencers and decision makers and share the Coca-Cola company's research findings. For example, did you know that there are no harmful effects of different Coca-Cola beverages on rat testicles?
was that even a concern? Thou doth protest too much, methinks. <clears throat> when the American Academy of Family Physicians was called out on their proud new corporate relationship with Coke to support patient education on healthy eating, an executive vice president of the Academy tried to quell the protest by explaining that the alliance was not without precedent. They had relationships with Pepsi and McDonald's for some time. <laughs> Reminiscent of similar types of relationships in the past. This didn't seem to placate the critics, so the exec assured them that the American Dietetic Association has made a policy statement that there are no good or bad foods, a position that the food industry has then exploited. Now, in the early years, the tobacco industry sounded a similar theme. Smoking per se wasn't bad, just excess smoking. Sound familiar? Everything in moderation. <laughs> Is this what family docs and dietitians have been reduced to? To justify unholy financial alliances? They deny that there are actually unhealthy foods? Thankfully, there is a corporate sector that actually benefits from healthy people, the insurance industry. Last year, a nutrition update for physicians was published in the official journal of Kaiser Permanente, the largest managed care organization in the country covering about 9 million people, about 15,000 physicians who were told that healthy eating may be best achieved with a plant-based diet. Defined as a regimen that encourages whole plant-based foods and discourages meats, dairy, and eggs, as well as all refined and processed junk. And too often, physicians ignore the potential benefits of good nutrition and quickly prescribe medications instead of giving their patients a chance to correct their disease through healthy eating and active living. Physicians should therefore consider recommending a plant-based diet to all their patients especially those with high blood pressure, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. The major downside is that it may work a little too well. If people are on medications for blood pressure or blood sugar, right, they can actually drop too low, so physicians may need to adjust medications or eliminate them altogether. The side effects, ironically, may be not having to take drugs. Despite the strong body of evidence favoring plant-based diets, many physicians are not stressing the importance of plant-based diets as a first-line treatment for chronic diseases. That's a bit of an understatement. <clears throat> now, this could be because of lack of physician awareness or a lack of patient education material. So, Kaiser sought to change that. Want to lose weight? feel better, improve, stabilize, or even reverse chronic disease, get off some of your medications? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then the plant-based eating plan may be right for you. <laughs> Side effects may include lower cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood sugar, reversal or prevention of our number one killer, a longer life, healthier weight, lower risk of cancer, diabetes, even slow the progression of cancer, improve inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. They offer tips to get started, meal plan ideas, and I'm honored to say, a good taste in websites. <clears throat> The paper ends with a familiar refrain, further research is needed. In this case, though, further research is needed to find ways to make plant-based diets the new normal. Thank you.